Brian, who is going to be talking to you about optimal value parking. It's a project that is trying to bring commercial parking solutions. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I feel like a bit of a sound here. I mean, we've got real luminaries. Uh, the, the, the speakers that you've heard this morning and uh, the rest of this afternoon. And I'm uh, not really presenting a technical talk, and I, I hope it will be interesting. Um, uh, but obviously, it's, it's great to be here. I'm going to be talking about autonomous value parking, which is a uh, funded project uh, that the UK government uh, is funding. So, this is out of the Centre of Connected Autonomous Vehicles and Innovate UK. Uh, it's a collaborative project, so, park here. So I'm going to briefly have what each um, uh, part is, is doing in the project and we get to. Automated parking is probably the uh, fully automated uh, driving feature that you've never heard of. Um, and it's actually to be one of the first, I think, uh, that we can reasonably expect. In fact, probably you'll be able to buy a system in 2021, uh, a vehicle that is able to actually park itself. And we're trying to be part of that. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Parkopedia, kind of how we fit in. Um, so we were started about 10 years ago. Uh, our founder was trying to find a space park uh, in San Diego, he find a space to park, and came up on this idea, well, actually, if he's got this problem, maybe others have a similar problem. Where do I park? So we created a database, um, which is now the world's leading provider of uh, parking information and parking services. So we have a number of um, customers, um, and we also have an app, which you might want to have a look at. Um, it basically answering the question, where can I park? So we have the largest uh, parking data set and, and services um, that is available in the markets. We operate in 8,075 countries, um, and there's quite a lot of off-street parking locations. And what we're looking at doing as part of this project is thinking through uh, how an autonomous vehicle should be able to park itself. So we already have the other bits of the puzzle here. We've got static data, which is answering the question, where can I park? So that's a big database um, and contains lots of metadata about you know, at car parks to tell me what the costs are, what, what are the opening hours, um, what are the restrictions, height restrictions, etc. Et that is useful, but not, uh, not complete in and of itself. What you also want to know is when I get there in 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour, will there be a space for me? Or at least what is the probability that there is space? So that's what we talk about when we talk about dynamic data. So making predictions about um, about availability. There will also have transaction capability, so you might want to reserve a space, you might want to pay for parking. Um, and then the last bit is what I'm really interested in, is okay, so now that you can do all of these things, what else do you need for a car to be able to park itself autonomously? So we talk about indoor navigation. So this is the scenario that we're, uh, that we're trying to demonstrate as part of this project. Like you would drive to a car park, take out your keys, hand them to the valet, the valet goes off and parks your car. So now you drive to the car park, take out your phone, fire up the app, press park, and the car goes off itself. And when you're ready, um, maybe later the day, maybe in a week or two's time, you come back, press summon, and the car comes and collects you. So this is autonomous value parking. I think of it as a slightly more, uh, slightly more restricted uh, problem. Actually, the problem that I'd really like to solve is autonomous parking, where you drive to where you want to be, not in the car park, but you drive to where you want to be, in the city center, or at the train station, or at the airport, take out your phone, you press park. But that's a harder problem to solve. We're, right now, we're just focusing on navigating around uh, a car park and being able to enable vehicles to park itself. Commercially, is this going to work? Well, uh, we think so. Um, because it is the most desirable AS feature, uh, significantly more than the others, um, and it's also something that we believe there is quite a lot of public acceptance for. Um, so, the German public, maybe they've moved on since 2016, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, certainly when uh, the survey was done, um, they seem quite confident handing over control to a vehicle uh, with parking, but less so in, in other scenarios. The other reason that it's quite likely to, be, uh, to work commercially is because of the low cost and risk profile. So um, one of the problems, of course, with autonomous vehicles, bombing down the highway at 7 miles an hour, is you actually need to develop a pretty good representation of where you are. Um, and so that typically requires LiDAR, looking at better like as H64s, um, and it can get very expensive. When you start adding in all of this kit, it gets really expensive. The nice thing about autonomous valet parking is you can do this basically just with cameras and maybe ultrasonic sensors 
and potentially an IMU, um, and you're driving around at five miles an hour, maybe, in a car park, um, you, the, the wonderful thing is you don't care. Once you've pressed park, the car goes and parks itself, and you don't care how long it takes to park. Yes, you care how long it's going to take to come and pick you up, but you know you can factor that in. If you know it's going to take ten minutes, you press some ten minutes before. So I'm sure many of you are already familiar with any levels. Uh, just briefly go through them, just so that you know you understand the context of what it is we're trying to do. So from level zero, it's just really admission. Level one starts to automate a little bit of the system. Level two is trying to automate multiple functions together. Level three um, is almost self-driving, but uh, the vehicle can give over control. Uh, to a human, to a bean, um, it's, level three is, is not very well defined. Level four is this big jump. Now we're talking about full autonomy here. Um, and so we're fully autonomous driving, but in restricted scenarios. Um, and so that's really what we're looking at. So you know, autonomous valet parking is fully autonomous, but with restricted scenarios. And then obviously level five is fully autonomous everywhere. Will we get to that? I'll leave it to judge. So, Park Assist has followed this SAE level evolution, really. And there are systems now, which I'll, I'll mention in subsequent slides, where vehicles can basically park themselves. Um, stuff that you buy commercially right now is still uh, assisting you. So, you know, for example, I think uh, uh, BMW's a system where uh, you engage park, um, it will steer, but you still have to you know, engage the throttle with the brake. Um, but what we're looking at here is where you actually climb out of the vehicle and the vehicle does everything. So how do we enable this? What, what, are the, what, what additional services are required to support this? Well, we think there are two things, at least. Um, but these are the ones we're focusing on. Localization, so answer the question, where am I? And navigation, so how do I get from a spot with the car to any other place within, within that car so there are a number of different ways of approaching this. Um, one of them, option number one, is everything on the device. And so um, this is, I guess, probably the thing that you might want to hear over here, coming kind of this sort of technical meter. Um, but actually, it's probably not the system that most uh, automakers are going to go for. Uh, because there's a huge amount of processing that's, that's required uh, on the vehicle, um, you have to build a map. Uh, every single vehicle has to build its own map of the car park. Um, drift can become a problem, and you know, in this sort of scenario, you're probably likely to use something like LiDAR, and, and automakers really don't want to do this. They, they are able to do it, but they don't want to do it. So the second option is, okay, well, you can go ahead and instrument the uh, car park with sensors. Uh, and I'm showing you just a, an example here of Daimler and Bosch's demonstration, where they did exactly this. And don't get me wrong, this system is great for demos. Um, but it has its problems, it has its drawbacks. Uh, so one of them is, think about this, this uh, set of sensors. How is it going to work with other automakers as well? Because you want a scenario where um, this set of sensors only works with Daimler, it doesn't work with anyone of the other. Oh, yes. So you need a common standard. Someone's going to install these, these sensors, someone's going to maintain them. Who's going to pay for this? How are you actually going to do this and develop a, a commercial model? And so we don't think that this is going to work. Partly because uh, it's not clear who's going to pay for the installation here, um, but also <coughs> car parks are not really designed, uh, you know, to have things retrofitted in them, and the car park owners don't really want to do this either because they're they're just interested in building the car park. They've you know they've laid out their money and they don't want to they don't want to touch that again. They've got a 20 year return period and they, they don't want to touch it. So similar, I've, uh, I've called this option four. Actually, the slides wrong. Should be option three. Similar, um, <clears throat> just do the same, but with passive sensors. So QR code, for example. Once again, great for demos, all the same things, but you know, who's going to pay for maintenance when there's graffiti on, the, on these QR codes? Who's going to pay for, uh, for the maintenance and installation? So the option that, we're, that we think is really going to work is maps. So it has a number of advantages. Obviously, one is that you, you map it once, and then you can use it for all vehicles. Um, a compact representation, so we've developed uh, an XML representation of a car park, uh, which our customers can use, um, and it contains all the information that you need to navigate and to localize. Um, 
Okay, and so we've done uh, some pilots uh, of these maps. So uh, last year in January, we announced uh, that we worked with Volkswagen uh, to do this. Uh, we also worked with Daimler, with Audi, and with uh, BMW on var variants of this. But the reason why we've got this project is because we need to take the demonstrations that we've got proofs of concept and really take that through to the point where we can actually have a product that we can sell. So the two main questions that we solve are what do the maps need to look like in order to be able to navigate and localize? Uh, and these maps have got to be able to work in car parks all around the world. So not just Europe or just Germany or just the UK. And so, so what do they need to look like? What kind of uh, localization objects need to be embedded within the maps? Uh, what sort of accuracies, etc. And then the other question is, well, what sort of localization algorithms should you use with those maps? So the two are really interlinked. And this is uh, the main reason why the University of Surrey is working on this uh, with us. Uh, they're, they're doing a lot of this work in terms of the localization. And there are other questions that the consortium is looking to answer as well, like, you know, what is the customer experience and, and how is this actually going to benefit um, drivers? What is the impact of this going to be? The, the functional safety, and a few other things. Once we've developed these maps and the algorithms, we want to demonstrate it. So for that, we purchased a Street Drone 1, uh, so it's a, it's a Modified Renault Twizy, it's a tiny little vehicle, uh, it's actually classed as a quad bike, it doesn't have windows. Um, electric vehicle, uh, PA2 uh, goes at the back, um, it has eight cameras attached to it, so uh, 623 and two 63 front facing cameras. Ours has a LiDAR on the top, so we're using the LiDAR in order to be able to create the maps, uh, and then during the, uh, the operation of the vehicle uh, to create a virtual safety catch. But the localization part, um, won't use the, uh, the library. So localization uh, takes map information, takes the, uh, the camera information, uh, you, uh, wind coders, uh, and ultrasound sensors as well. And so we're working on uh, AutoWare, if you've heard of it, uh, so that work is all happening uh, in the open, and OpenSD, uh, so we've forked AutoWare, uh, and basically everything that we want to push up into AutoWare, but is not suitable because it's specific to the street drone, or specific to our use case and is, is definitely not suitable for them, uh, we'll go in OpenSD, and if, if it can't go in OpenSD, then we'll keep it in us. So in summary, autonomous valley parking is, is coming. We're expecting that you can buy a vehicle probably around 2021 that will be able to do this, and we're, yeah, we're trying to be a part of it. So if you'd like to get involved in any way, uh, you're welcome to, to make contributions. Also, where is out there? Um, that's open, and we also have a self-driving car meetup, which meets probably every six weeks. And, uh, to see so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer.